Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I request you all to use the chat area very humanely. I also want to give a trigger warning before we start the session. The session could be triggering for some people as it has sensitive topic in consideration. If you feel that you're not ready for it, please uh, do not watch it any further. Uh, after the session, we'll post some support groups who you can reach out onto. We also have the same in our Instagram uh, highlight. If you need any legal aid, consultancy, or content removal, you can drop a text on our helpline given on our Instagram page. Um, with that, uh, good evening, everyone. I hope you are doing well. I am Tandish from Cyberblog India team, and I will be the host for the evening. This is going to be a 10th Instagram live session, as an up to 2022 conference titled Abuse and Harassment in Cyberspace Beyond the Perceived Notions of Mainstream. The conference seeks to initiate discussions on the threats faced by the LGBTQIA LGBTQ plus community members on the internet to facilitate sharing of niche stories and first-hand experiences of community members to raise awareness about the challenges faced by the community while dealing with cybercrime incidents. To know more about the conference, I request you to follow our Instagram page or drop a text on our helpline number, which you can find on our page's contact details. For today's session, uh, we have Gazal with us. Gazal Dhariwal is a lead writer of the Netflix series, Mismatched. She is a proud trans woman who has written on four films such as Kareeb Kareeb Single, Lipstick Under My Burka, and Ek Ladki Ko Dekha To Aisa Laga, which is a first mainstream Hindi film on a gay woman's romantic and family life. She's a public speaker and LGBTQIA plus activist. She has spoken openly about being trans in several talks, most famously in an episode of Satya Mev Jaitin. Thank you so much, Gazal, for accepting our invitation for being part of this conference. Thank you for having me, Tanvi. Thank you for all the work that you guys are doing. Uh, with that, uh, our first question, Gazal, will be, how was your journey on the internet? Um, so my, uh, you know, of course, this will reveal my age, uh, but uh, unlike you guys, in my teenage is when the internet, you know, we heard of something called the internet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those were the times when you, when they used to be dial-up modems. Um, there was nothing like Wi-Fi or broadband or anything like that. Uh, they used to be dial-up modems. You used to dial a number and it would go on beeping forever, beep, beep, beep forever. And then finally, sometimes it would get connected, sometimes, you know, You'd get disconnected and you'd just start all over again. All of us had Yahoo mails and, uh, you know, this sort of instant communication was such a new thing. It was fascinating. Um, so even though we didn't particularly have anybody to write to, like we didn't have anything great, important going on in our, in our uh, official or school lives, but still we all had emails and emails write to each other every once in a while. It was, um, it was just, you know, it just seemed like something fascinating, something new. Uh, that was pretty much my very, very first interaction with the internet. Um, we didn't, like my family and I didn't have internet connection at our place. My mama G used to use our neighbors. So every day we would just go there, internet ke bahani, the ke bahani, just to go and use the internet. Uh, just for the heck of it. And then later, of course, you know, uh, late 90s, my cyber cafes became a big part of our lives. Um, yeah, so, you know, we would, I still remember there would be like 10 rupees for half an hour or 20 rupees for half an hour, sometimes it would be that expensive. And that was just, you know, so that you could go to this one little cubicle and use that computer, which would take you out into this whole, high, whole wide world um, filled with possibilities and, you know, uh, spaces where you could discover yourself. I think those cyber cafes are, are is what I would say was my most meaningful first interaction with the internet, with the world wide web. That would be in the late 90s. And in fact, it was, you know, uh, it was in a cyber cafe when for the first time I found out about uh, people being transgender, that there is a word called transgender and that there is 
there are these identities where people don't identify with their birth sex, uh, right? And it was a, so this was in Jaipur. I had moved to Jaipur. I, I grew up in Patiala, I had to Jaipur for my engineering uh, course. And that's where I went to a cyber cafe for the first time. And I, I had grown up knowing that I was not a, a male person inside, even though my body was that of a male. Um, life that I could lead. But just, just like that, I just put it on uh, Yahoo search. I, I typed sex change and I pressed enter and that pretty much, you know, changed my life because I, I, I got results there where I found out that that's something that's, that actually happens. There are, there are some people in the world, very few at that time, who'd had access to the technology where they could transition their, their you know, biological bodies into the gender that they identified. So it was absolutely internet that that gave me uh, a sense of a true sense of belonging, a sense of identity. Just this, you know, the the I would say this deep sort of breath that I was able to take, take knowing that I'm not, you know, I'm not a crazy person. Because till that point, I used to think I'm the only one like myself whole world. It's no one like me. And that would naturally make you think that you're crazy. You have no idea. That you're just you're just wrong. Plain. That's it. You're wrong. And that was the first time. It was internet that made me uh, see and know that I was not. That I was just, you know, one of one of the many possibilities of nature. One of many kinds of human beings and beings on the planet. And it's this, I don't know, this it's this diversity of our humanity that's beautiful, that's rich. Okay. Um, I think it's, it's really good to see that uh, how internet was uh, opening for you to see, to see that there are lives beyond just the so said binary. And it's, it's, so, it's so interesting yeah. to even hear from you about that. Um, I think with that, my next question will be, uh, you work in predominantly uh, Bollywood industry where there are, there is like some kind of, you know, uh, stereotypes, phobias, fear attached, some cultural norms that you have to follow. Do you think when you entered the industry first, it was inclusive enough as it is now? Um, see, of course, it's much better now. Um, So I'll tell you, I'll share one experience with you that I had early on. Um, this was very early in my career. I had no workout. I was still just desperately searching for work. And I happened to have a meeting with a, a producer. And he had seen some of my work. Like he'd given me some an assignment um, to test my ability. And I had I'd written something and I... Uh, shared it with him, he read it, and he liked a lot of it, which is why he called me for a meeting. Um, and then, so he shared everything with me that, you know, I like this, I like this. Uh, but before we go deep into, you know, talking about other things, your name is really beautiful. Tell me who named you. Um, so when he asked that, see, I have never hidden uh, my past. And uh, uh, that's a matter of choice. It's it's absolutely fine. Some people don't want to be out about that. Um, that's a fair choice. I I chose to be out. I had always chosen to be out. Um, so I saw ne no reason to to lie. I mean, there was reason to lie, but I couldn't get myself to do that. So I I told him why my name is Kazal. I told him that I named myself. 
after I transitioned from a male body to a female body. And he was just, you know, he was shocked. And he, um, he's otherwise a really confident man, but he was, he didn't know what to say. He was at a loss for words and he was uncomfortable. Uh, so then, you know, what he said was, uh, which I'm sure he regrets, I know he regrets now, but what he said then was that, you know, now I don't know how to talk to you. Like if you were a guy, then I would know how to explain, how to give you feedback, how to tell you how to look at the scene. If you were a girl, I would know how to tell you how to look at a scene. But now I don't know who you are. I don't know how to explain anything to you. Uh, that was uh, quite hurtful, obviously. It was, uh, and, you know, I don't know how I did that that time uh, because he's, he's quite senior. But I couldn't, I just couldn't take that. I said, sir, I'm a girl and that's how you have to treat me. That's how you have to explain things to me. And he went completely on a back foot then. And uh, uh, that meeting was not very productive. But of course, you know, he later turned, turned around, came around and uh, today he's a big supporter and all of that. So, you know, the thing is, it's also that I have grown, I'm at, I'm at a certain age now where I'm, I think I'm able to have more empathy for people as well. There are people who are not who are genuinely bad people. It's just that they've not had exposure. They've their world has been so limited. But but they're not bad people. If you give them time, if you and they're intelligent people, if you give them time, if you show them the right paths, they're willing to learn. So um I have learned over my over my years of transition and of course post transition the past 10 years. 15 years that you have to have patience with people uh, anything new and anything which is which is something they haven't seen in decades people do take time to adjust to that as long as they're not being violent towards you as long as they're not being abusive or offensive we can give people some patience from our I have only learned it now uh, after very many years. Um, and I try to I try to convey that to whoever whenever I, I get an opportunity like that. It's really good to hear. Yeah, that. so but yes, the industry has improved. I think yeah. I think the industry has definitely changed. It mm -hmm. has improved. Um, of course, you know, at the end of the day, we are a part of this society. So uh, we're still not at a place where, you know, we're not at a place where it wouldn't be necessary at all to speak about somebody's sexuality or their gender status. Abiti, there are, you know, gossip mills and those those things that still go around where people talk behind each other, behind other people's backs sometimes. Not everyone. But there are enough of those people still. Um, but today, people know that if you have a lot of people because of them being queer, then you will be judged. So even if they they are the ones who will be put into the category of the offenders and not the queer community. So that is definitely something. And that's a, that's a great step. That's a great place to be in. That's, that's progress. I think from that, uh, what I have to ask you, you being a screenwriter and writing a movie about a queer persons would be a better person to ask uh, what do you think uh, has been the impact of OTT platforms and say movies which have come out with like Ayushman Khurana which being a uh, gay movies, trans movies which have come out. Do you think uh, the portrayal of queer persons in those movies 
uh, could have been better or even even the, the choice of uh, the choice of mainstream actors as well as the choice of people who were involved in those movies what do you have to say about that mm. Mm. uh so firstly i think streaming platforms have of course made a big difference um uh just by the virtue of the kind of you know content that they are supposed to create they are required to create um they are able to present stories which are less watched less heard of before because there's so much you know so much content out there on streaming and on web that today for them to be able to stand out for any content to be able to stand out they have to tell uh stories which are not that heard before stories which are less uh which haven't been seen before and unfortunately it's the story of the queer community stories of the queer community which are which haven't had any outlet till now and there are such rich stories such vibrant and um stories which so much potential you know so much drama comedy all sorts of emotions um which the queer queer community hasn't hasn't been seen in any of our stories in most of our stories till now and i think in stream the streaming platforms today have understood that have understood the potential of those stories not only because they are unique they are less seen and heard of but also because of their um the 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 human value in them of how relatable they all are even though they even though the queer community may seem like the other uh for the cis het community for them it might be like oh queer topic oh they are the other but if you really sit down to watch they're all human love is the same it might be between any gender of people it's the same um so yeah stream platforms just by the virtue of the fact that they need a lot of content and they need different and unique content it's a business need for them at the end of the day they need unusual stories but what is what it has led to is that we are getting to watch and hear stories which you know should have been heard 50 years back 100 years back because they've been there for as long as mankind has been there um coming to your question about uh the um the films with queer queer theme I'm not see I'm not I don't want to take on the role of a film critic. Um I'm going to say that any uh well-meaning film or story which which is telling a queer story in a good light in a positive light. I'm in support of that. I think I think we should take baby steps. Uh a lot of storytellers and directors are still finding their feet when it comes to these stories um that doesn't mean that it's okay for them to not work hard as long as somebody is working hard and as long as they're meaning well um i am in support of them uh could could they have been something better and should mangal zada saaf tha no chandigarh darya shukti sure but they did do a lot of good simply by what they were trying to do trying to tell the story that they tried yes they did a lot of good so many queer people felt seen through those films they felt represented they were able to take their families to watch those films and they were able to have conversations with their families so um you know the, i feel that today on the internet there's a lot of we are up in arms a lot we we try to find faults a lot 
we also must pause and find things which are worthy of appreciation. Uh, acknowledge what people are, are genuinely trying to do, well-meaning people are trying to do. And give them feedback. Tell them that this did not work. Yes, it would have been ideal if, you know, uh, Vani's character in Chandigarh Priyashi would have been played by a trans woman. Yes, that would have been ideal. Um, but let's congratulate them first. Let's tell them that you did a good job. Let's also tell Vani that she did a good job. She clearly did her research. She worked hard at it. I felt touched watching her. Tell them all those things first and then say that, you know, this could have been better. Um, maybe next time work hard at this as well. Um, it's important that, you know, we have to, we have to create collaborations with people and not become us versus them. Not, not just always point fingers. Also shake hands from time to time. Yeah. That was very beautifully explained. Um, Tanvi, please you. feel free to please feel free to interrupt me anytime huh? because I I realize that I go on talking and so oh, you no. should uh, you know please just interrupt me uh, divert the conversation however you want to divert. That's totally okay. No, I think this is the stage for you to talk. We we, we want to hear. That's that's the first step forward. <laughs> I think from no, there. Sometimes I, I try to I tend to become repetitive, uh, but okay. <laughs> And that's totally fine. Right. Cool. Let's, let's yeah. move on. Okay. So uh, from there, I think I want to ask you about uh, cross-dressing, uh, which has become a part of, say, comedy media and has become hilarious. Though the uh, other panelists also had a very mixed opinion about it. But do you think that impacts somebody who's trying to, say, look for their inclusivity in the whole spectrum of gender? Yeah, I do. I do. I find, uh, uh, you know, especially I mean, the topmost example that comes to my mind is the Kapil Sharma show, which is such a rage across the country. And more than 50% of their jokes come at the expense of uh, males who are cross-dressing. And, uh, uh, and because it's such a popular show, that just becomes the norm for people, people who watch it, for them, cross-dressing people are just um, subjects of mockery, right? And that makes me very sad um, because that show has the potential to do something like, you know, humor can be, humor Humor doesn't need to be so basic. I mean, I think our writers need to work harder to create good jokes, which don't have to be at the expense of such underprivileged communities. You know, that's, that's the most basic kind of humor. That's so easy. I mean, please, come on, work hard. It's your job. It's your job to write. It's your job to work hard and create create jokes which are of a certain standard and which don't exploit communities which anyway have so little going for them, right? Um, so yeah, I think people really need to pull up their uh, socks and fix these things. Yeah. So uh, from there, I'll take the conversation to the social media. Have you ever faced any kind of hate speech or say somebody slipping into your DM and writing something very odd? So even homophobic for that sense uh, in your in your section, how do you deal with all those situations if they did happen? Um, so, uh, okay. You know, the thing is, I, I've heard a lot of stories of harassment of queer people happening online. Sorry. Lots of, uh, I mean, I've heard of cases a lot there. You know, there are issues there, um, uh, incidents of catfishing, uh, people being blackmailed, uh, blackmailed that they would be outed, catfishing as in, you know, you would, 
they would call you to meet for a date and then they would be violent with you. I know of someone, um, this trans girl in my hometown. Uh, you know, she's really underprivileged. She actually works on a tea stall. And uh, so she, there was this guy who she was chatting with online and he asked her to come and meet him. And when she went to meet him, he just, you know, just grabbed her phone, stole it and ran away. He just, that's all he intended to do. And the, this is just one small case, but there are so many cases like this. Um, because, especially because, you know, as as queer community, as queer people, there's, there's such little um, safe spaces for us out in the world that we try to find it a lot in the online world. And so it's very easy for us to get sucked into uh, these holes where people exploit us or people, uh, you know, just are only meaning to have fun at our expense. So I've heard a lot of such stories. Uh, in my very early days, pre-transition days, I've also had one or two incidents of this very time. Um, but I've been fortunate that over the last 10 years or so, I've not had to face a lot of, um, so to say, especially not in my DMs not had to face any harassment of any kind. But yeah, there are, you know, one of cases like, uh, uh, you know, on Facebook one time last year, I think last year it happened, that, uh, so my politics were not in agreement with somebody who was my Facebook friend. Um, so he was right wing, you know, I was posting, ridiculing our current government and Prime Minister and all that. And uh, he, he had claimed to be like an ardent fan or, or whatever. And he just started, he just became a completely different person in the comment section. He would, every single comment, like he was just writing, hijra, 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 just kept calling me names, kept abusing me. Um, and, uh, you know, that time I was like, no, I have to believe in free speech. I'm not going to block him or whatever. So I would let him, let him go on commenting. But after a point, it started really uh, affecting. Uh, it used to, you know, it used to be triggering because, of course, I, I had heard all of that in real life uh, 20 years back in my life. So eventually I did block him and I realized that that's the sensible thing to do because um, my page doesn't, doesn't necessarily have to be a free speech area for just anybody. You know, that's my page. It's free speech for me. Uh, um, so yeah, there was, you know, a case like that. And uh, what else? I can't think of anything you know, that really stands out. There was, um, there was once, there was this BBC India had done a small little interview with me. You, they put it out on YouTube and there were lots of comments on that. I remember reading where, uh, you know, people, um, BBC, it was Punjabi. So it was in the Punjabi language. So a lot of Punjabi comments were there saying that, oh, you know, oh, this is a transgender person. And then there were guys who were laughing about that, um, teasing one another, saying, oh, to be SI, to be SI, stuff like that. But, you know, I know that there are queer people who are much worse than this. Um, but yeah, these are a couple of my personal experiences. I'm sure it would be having a very, very difficult time. I think. One of one of our uh, other panelists uh, said that the reason why it happens to us is because we are an easy target. 
and and yeah. they expect that we will not revolt back or we will not retaliate because we don't tend to have help but mm-hmm. they should now know that we do have help we have help in form of support groups in form of our community members in form of the people we have become friends with now who are like us and i think that's yeah. that, that's that's our power which we have together yeah yeah especially you know over the last couple of years i think there's been a uh, this wave of uh, new voices on mm-hmm. the internet where they're strong voices they mean business and they they and there are a lot of them who've come now so anybody who's anybody who's going to act biophobic or you know act horribly they're going to be put in their place because there'll be all these voices coming at them together telling that you know you're living in another era you really need to grow up and come forward so i think anybody today who's going to write such things for against where people will will think twice before they do that things are changing things are changing really fast thanks yeah. to thanks to the internet even though internet is also a space which which can be very unsafe can feel unsafe for for people for the queer community but it's also fast becoming a space where they can find relief they can find uh unity they can find friendship totally how was it for you uh, growing up in a very very cultural so called cultural indian family and being queer person it's the taboos and phobias and so many cultural norms around it how did you like how did you manage to break all those oh my god <laughs> i might have to write a book right here <laughs> the long long uh um you know i always say this that i i come with a lot of privilege because i uh happen to have parents who are just exceptional like extremely extremely few parents were like that who who just totally loved me. um even though they they were not able to understand me understand how a um, a boy could feel like a girl uh they had no idea what that meant but they never compromised on the love that they gave throughout my growing up years um they of course struggled very hard with it um if at any given point that they saw me struggling i knew that they were struggling with me um i was just extremely fortunate that when i finally took the decision to transition uh to my real self their primary concern was not ke lo kya kahe their primary concern was my health and my safety my security and uh unfortunately most most you know people are just caught in this trap of what will people talk about us it's really unfortunate it's it's as small as that ki dusre parivar wale kya kahenge oh mama ji taya ji kya kahenge ya padosi kya kahenge you know wo kya kahenge remains only for two months three months uske baad everyone moves on everyone is a room light theek hai people go on into their own lives everyone has their own issues but it's that it's just that first two or three uh moments or months of that question of what will they say that parents and families just have to go get over so i was very lucky that my parents didn't think that way uh so they were my biggest support system um and yes my my writing used to help me a lot i used to i used to um have a journal that i would write it today of course you know today there's 
Instagram and the social media where people are able to vent and people openly share their experiences, their feelings. Um, I'm anyway an introvert, so I don't know if I would do that even today, even if I were your age today. Um, but I had my journey in which I used to just be able to put my whole heart out there. And um, that was my safe space. Even though I had no, nobody else around me who I felt was like me. It was just extremely lonely. Um, it was lonely because I, I felt I was the only one like myself. But thankfully, I always had love. I always had family members who loved me deeply, despite who I was. That's very, very beautiful to hear that there are people out there who are standing with you no matter what. And I really do hope that everyone gets such support uh, in whatever form they can. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes, they um, must. They must get that support. You know, it's life changing. I really hope if there are any parents or families watching this by any chance, please, all it takes is loving your child up. And why not? You, you brought that child into this world. They didn't ask you to bring them into this world. You brought them here. Let them be happy. Kya jayega? Just, you know, all it takes is love. That's all. Okay. Um, I think with that, we've come to the end of our session. Um, if you want to add anything for the audience in any way, you can go ahead and do it. Uh, I just want to say, uh, especially to the queer people who might be watching this, that, you know, the most important thing is your safety, okay? Um, internet is a very, uh, is a great place where you can find company, where you can find love, where you can find a sense of identity. But it can also be an unsafe space, like we were discussing. Um, be very uh, cautious, you know. I know I know it's lonely and sometimes you, know, it, you would feel desperate to just, you know, let me just go and meet them because I'm so alone. Please, please ensure that your safety is is in short, you know, um, because your life and health is more important than anything else. Life hai to aage ja kar aapko, it will get better. You'll get love, you'll get company and all that. But your safety and your health is priority. I just want to say that um, be very, very careful, especially if you're really young, because you have fewer experiences, just take some time. Don't jump into anything is all I would say. You know, just treat the internet like eggshells. There's 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 some nice stuff here, but there's also there's also stuff which might break your feet when you're walking over it. So be careful is all I want to say. Your safety has to be the number one priority. Thank you so much, Kasara, for this. Um, after the session, as I said before, we have some support groups in our story, as well as in highlight our Instagram page. You can reach out to them if you need any support, any help. You just need somebody to talk to, go ask them out. And uh, for any legal consultancy support and for any content removal support, we're always there. Uh, we're always there. Just text away. So just drop a text to us. Um, with that, we've come to the end of the session. Thank you so much, Kazal. Thanks, Tanvi. Thank you for all the great work that you guys are doing.